welcome to the first learn with list, maybe that's what we'll call this series, video of my YouTube channel. So when I was thinking about the direction I wanna take this channel in the welcome video, I talked about all of the things that I wanna to talk to you and teach you about when it comes to exercise science, training for big outdoor adventures or fueling these things. And I was thinking about the information that you would need to really be able to understand and apply these things. And so today's video, I want to break down a topic that I think is really important to understand all these things that you can refer back to or you can watch and build on with your knowledge and your learning as we go across other different topics on this channel or I can refer back to. So if you're a little bit confused and you don't have a scientific background that you can still kind of understand what we're talking about because I'm all about making sure that my science is being communicated to you in a way that you can apply it. So I will add the disclaimer, if you have advanced degrees or a college degree or advanced certifications in exercise physiology, exercise science, personal training, please remember that while some of you watching this might have that um, and you might be wanting to learn from me, a lot of people don't. So I'm going to be making sure that I'm talking about this in a way that like maybe your mom can actually understand. Um, so I'm not gonna be giving all of the details. It's not going to be like a science textbook, but enough that people can use that information and apply it to their own training um, or learn something new. And so I'm gonna start today with talking to you about energy system. So as we talked about my welcome video and you guys will learn, I am getting my PhD in exercise science, exercise physiology, and the backbone of so much of exercise physiology and especially metabolism, which is what I really study, is energy systems. So what the hell is an energy system, Alyssa? So when we think about how our body produces energy in order for us to to stay in activity, stay alive, metabolize our food, just exist and live as humans, we use these energy systems. So there's a few different processes in our body that basically are an interaction between our cells and enzymes and the food we eat that allow us to create and use or break down products to get energy from to sustain the activity that we're doing or this is just the processes in which our food are broken down in our bodies even without exercise. So there's two different times that these things are occurring that we're gonna talk about a lot on my channel and that's the response during exercise and or these are just the way our body metabolizes food which is really cool. So I think it's important to have this background knowledge for all of these things. So I've got my handy dandy notebook like this is like a door of the explorer, but learn with list style. So I make sure that I can cover all these topics for you guys. I took a little bit of notes because I really want to make sure that we touch base on all these things so you can fully kind of understand where we're getting at, but in a quick and succinct way. So we have three main energy systems. We have the phosphocreatine system, we have anaerobic glycolysis, and then we have aerobic glycolysis. And I'll define these a little bit more in a second. So these are our three main energy systems, and these are what we use to break down food stuff or foods that we eat. Basically, a lot of carbs and fat. We don't usually break down protein as often, so when we think about these things, we kind of think about the role that they play in metabolizing carbohydrate or fat, either in response to the food that we're eating in our diet and or just to help sustain our activity and produce energy, gives energy to move during exercise, to do the work that we're trying to do. And so first we're gonna start with the phosphocreatine system. So this is going to be the first energy system in a traditional exercise physiology textbook. You're gonna see a graph that has a big spike and then another spike and then a long thing. And so when we think about energy systems, you can kind of think about them that way. Um, but I don't want you to think of them as being on off switches. It's not like you're only using one system, then you're only using another system, then you're only using the other system. They kind of work together. Think of it as a symphony, a symphony of your energy systems. They're not only ever working in isolation, they work together. It's just the, the reliance of one versus the others at different points or intensities in exercise kind of dictates what our body is going to be challenging or using or relying on a little bit more. So the first one being again, the phosphocreatine system. And you guys might've heard of the supplement creatine. If you've came here from Instagram, you know that I love talking about creatine because it is one of the most widely researched supplements in the market. But creatine works because it affects this system. So when you think phosphocreatine system and you think creatine, yes, it is the same type of creatine. But we naturally have creatine occurring in our bodies that allow us to do this. Even if you don't supplement, it's just supplementing gives us a boost there. That's a little quick side note. So if I was to get out of this chair right now and go run as hard as I can, I'd have about a 10 second out, out burst of activity before I'd kind of be forced to slow down. And that is your phosphocreatine system allowing us to have a short, intense bout of energy. And essentially the way this system works is it's those little phospho molecules. We have little phosphates. I think of them just those little circles with peas on them. That's how I always drew them in undergrad. You can think of them like that. 
interacting with our creatine molecules. And we use these together to help regenerate and break down something called ATP. So ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Just think of it as an A with three little P circles attached to it. That's the easiest way to think about it. And so what happens when we're producing that rapid energy, one of those phosphos groups, the little, little ball with a P on it, gets broken off. But creatine comes together to with another phosphate and regenerates that. So it's making more ATP. And ATP is what we use for breakdown to produce energy, to produce work. And so it kind of works together in this like, like nature to really rapidly bring those little P's and put them back on that ATP. So it has three of the P's because that's what it needs to be a full molecule and break it down, re-put it back together. And it allows us to have those more rapidly available so we can produce a lot of energy very intensely and very quickly. But we only have a limited supply of creatine in our bodies at any one given period of time. That's where supplementing can come and help, but it's not gonna allow us to use it all day. Even if we supplement, we get a little bit extra of a boost, but we still can't use it for hours. You're really only getting it for seconds rather than minutes or hours. So that is the phosphocreatine system. And you can think of that as an odd sprint, your weight training, especially your like maybe one, two, three rep max type test things, or getting a few extra reps out in a heavy set things like that. It's allowing you to do a little bit more work um, by rapidly supplying more force and power output because it has energy coming a little bit more rapidly, but we can't sustain that all day. So then we move into something called anaerobic glycolysis, which basically can be broken down into no oxygen needed glucose breakdown. So when we eat carbohydrates in our body, they're all broken down into glucose by some pathway. So they all come in and they're broken down, little chemical reactions, and they become glucose. And then glucose comes into this pathway and so we don't need oxygen to do this um, we'll get on to what oxygen does in a second here but we don't need oxygen to do this we basically can take the carbs in our body and break them down to produce a lot more ATP so we get like 32 to 36 of these ATP molecules which means nothing to you but it's more it's more than what we were getting before and so we get a decent amount of um, energy without even needing oxygen so you are breathing in there is oxygen in your body you might just not be using it yet or you're working at a higher intensity um, so that your body's relying on this a little bit more. Um, so glucose is broken down and it's going to be broken down in this process, giving us ATP to sustain our activity and energy. And this is gonna support exercise that's probably ranging in like one to 10 minutes. So you can think about like a all out one mile sprint, um, I did a 10 mile max a distance effort run today. So that was using a lot of my glycolytic system, my anaerobic glycolysis, a lot of carb dependent energy metabolism, not a ton of oxygen being used in that time, just really hard effort work. You can think of that as like your 10 minute AMRAPs during your CrossFit wads. Um, maybe you're doing an EMOM and your weightlifting sets, kind of weight training in general. A lot of this pathway is being used. So you're not really using a ton of oxygen in the moment to produce or sustain your activity, but you can't sustain that for a long period of time because our muscles and bodies need oxygen. So remember these things aren't on off, but we're just relying on it a little bit more or mainly in these types of activities. And so this is again, pretty much using all carbohydrate. This is why a lot of high heart intense exercise requires so much carbohydrate to sustain it. And so this pathway at the very end, everything's broken down into little carbon molecules. So you can think of these as like little C's. So we have the little P's and little C's. And these little carbon molecules are either broken down and then if we continue to not have oxygen and work at a really high exercise output, it gets sent and turned into lactate or it gets sent into something called the, the TCA or Krebs cycle where it will be used for oxidative energy metabolism or accumulate in our blood and either be regenerated back into glucose or kind of force us to slow down because of the fact that it's accumulating in our blood, very acidic environment, lots of hydrogen ions, and we cannot sustain that unless we have oxygen to help clear that out. So when we're finishing using anaerobic glycolysis, we have that lactate, right? And that will start to accumulate and really kind of burns when we feel it in our muscles. Um, but if we have oxygen, so either by slowing down or stopping, we can either clear that lactate out to be re-metabolized into glucose to go back in these systems, or at the very end, those carbons go into something like I just mentioned, the TCA or the Krebs cycle, it kind of goes by either term. And from there, we kind of take those carbons and we break them down even more into these molecules that help us carry electrons across something called the electron transport chain in our mitochondria that is driven by oxygen dependent 
phosphorylation. Again, we're talking those little phosphates again. So all these processes are, all they're doing is basically bringing back those phosphates back to that ATP molecule when it loses it. So we have more of that to break down for more energy. So after we go through this thing called the TCA and Krebs cycle, it brings out two things called NADH and FADH, which you probably don't need to know, but it's a fancy way of saying these are little carriers for electrons. So this thing called the electron transport chain that shuffles electrons across it to drive something that is like a mega ATP producer. So you can think of it as like a little shoot ball game. So these are like maybe your little, your little carriers and you go to this little shoot ball game at like Chuck E. Cheese or whatever you're playing at and you're sending these little balls inside and out these different little holes or pathways. And those are the proteins on the wall of the mitochondria. And so you may have heard in the past mitochondria be called the powerhouse of the cell. And this is why. It's because we produce massive amounts of that ATP molecule that we need to create power. And so we get a ton of this when we do this. We get hundreds versus like 32 to 36 or just a little bit with phosphocreatine system. Like we're getting hundreds of these molecules. So we have so much energy coming from this. And so you have these little molecules and they're shuffling electrons down this protein gradient. And so it has this thing and you can think of it as like a crank turn. And so all that energy is turning the crank on this machine. And this machine is just rapidly bringing back those little peas back to the A PPP where there's only two and bringing them back together so we have more of that for energy metabolism, but we need oxygen to do this. So we need oxygen to drive this. So this is why we're gonna be using the system a lot for recovery. So if you do high hard interval training or a heavy weight set, this is we're using this in this recovery. It's not just endurance activity, but yes, for our longer term endurance activity, specifically like running, we're gonna use a lot of this, especially when we get over like 30 minutes, an hour, or multi hours, the longer you go, the more you're going to be mostly relying on the system predominantly. But the system's really, really important. And so this all occurs within our mitochondria and it's pumping these things in and out along the cell wall. So like phosphocreatine and anaerobic glycolysis are kind of happening outside that cell wall or mitochondria. But this is its way of producing energy across us and generating a ton of this in there. And this is really important because we want a lot of energy to sustain the activity needs we want. And so what is nice about this pathway is we can bring carbs in from that carb pathway through that TCA cycle in to this pathway to break it down for aerobic glycolysis, or we can break down fats here. So you've noticed that we haven't burned any fats or used any fats so far. So we have something, we have a whole different process called beta oxidation. So like beta, like the B um, oxidation, which is the pathway in which we break down our fat molecules and they can be shuttled in with the same kind of carrier enzymes that we were talking about coming from the carb breakdown and use that to help drive energy metabolism and break down and produce more ATP. But the nice thing about fats is fats are like a really long chain of carbon. So our carbs are like little six, there's like six little C's linked together, but our fats have like 16 to 18 of these little carbons. So they can get broken down into pairs of two, just like our carbs, but you're getting so many more. So this is why being able to use fat is important, not just for like driving fat loss or fat burning workouts, but because it can produce a lot of energy when we're doing activity. So that can be carried into this energy system system pathway and drive a ton of energy metabolism. So we're not using these energy systems just one at a time. I really want to hone that home. Very traditional exercise science textbooks make it seem like it's an on off switch, but these things are kind of happening all of the time. So just like you use a lot of phosphocreatine during your lifts, that doesn't mean that you only get 10 seconds in your entire workout that you're using them, but you need to rest and recover to regenerate that so you can do it again. Same if you were doing high hard running intervals or whatever it is that you're doing. So you don't only use it for 10 seconds, but you can kind of synchronize between these systems as you need them, depending on what you're doing. So you might be in an ultra marathon and have a large high hard hill effort where you're gonna use a little bit more like anaerobic glycolysis, maybe a little bit phosphocreatine before you go back into using a lot of oxygen dependent energy metabolism. Same thing, we think about lactate as something that we are only producing when we're doing higher heart exercise, but you're making lactate right now, you just have enough oxygen in your body available to clear it out and turn it back into glucose. So you don't really feel it, you don't really notice that it's there and that's why during low level exercise activity, you don't really notice that your lactate's accumulating and that's a good thing because you don't want it to be depending on the type of effort that you're going for. And so you are always kind of having oxygen use 
available. It just might not be the predominant contributor to what's creating your energy in the moment. So you're probably not using a lot of oxygen independent metabolism again during your hard, heavy sets and lifting, but you are then gonna use it to help you recover. So you can see how they all work together. They're not happening in isolation. That's very synchronous. It's not just one thing at a time, but it's about the intensity and duration that affects what we're predominantly using in these moments. So I hope that that was insightful. I hope you all learned something. I hope that this is something that you can refer back to so that you know in the future, okay, well, Alyssa's is talking about zone tune training and building an aerobic base or creatine system when we learn about creatine, things like that. You could be like, well, what the heck does that even mean? I've never learned about this before in my life. You can come back, watch this video and be like, okay, there's my little like energy system one-on-one -on -one training so that I know when we're talking about these things, what it actually means why it's important and I really want to emphasize that you are smart enough to understand this stuff so let's do a quick review really quick so we can make sure that we really have some final touching points so that we make sure we're really driving this learning home and we'll call it a day so three main energy systems we have our phosphocreatine system our anaerobic glycolysis and our aerobic glycolysis phosphocreatine system really short 10 second all-out intense activity uses creatine to drive regeneration of broken down ATP to create energy. Anaerobic glycolysis, this is non-oxygen dependent carb breakdown. This is going to be short, all out, really intense, longer than 10 seconds, maybe a few minutes of activity. That's going to be using a ton of carbohydrates, but we're not really recovering during it. And so we can break down a lot really quick and that's either gonna turn into lactate, which will accumulate, so eventually we'd have to slow down and stop, um, or we'll slow down and stop or be using a low enough intensity that that lactate will be regenerated back to carbohydrate and a lot of that carbs will move into something called aerobic glycolysis or oxygen dependent metabolism. That is happening in the powerhouse of our cells, our mitochondria, which is a nice little network of these cells that have little proton pumps or proteins across them that are gonna pump electrons across to drive this energy making machine and it brings both carbs and fats into it so we can produce a lot of energy, but unfortunately it's slower so we can't go as hard as fast, right? So the speed of these things goes down as we move along them. So we have really fast, really quick, really short, really powerful, kind of in the middle, and then long-term, long-sustained power output. And those are your main energy systems. That's what you're gonna be using during exercise. That's what your food is going to use to metabolize and break down itself. Of course, these things can be driven to storage or break down for exercise activity. It's a topic for another day. But I hope you guys learned something. Please let me know. Please leave a comment below. Tell me something that you learned. I'd love to hear three takeaways that you got from this, something either new or something you understood a little bit better. And I would love if you would subscribe to my channel and share this video with a friend who might love this as well. Get the word out. Let's learn. We are smart enough to learn the signs behind our training and understand what it is that we're doing and why the heck we're doing it. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next time.